morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see you in a large number. And uh, of course, it's always good to be back in Sweden. I love Sweden. Um, as uh, was well, so nice introduced, I come from a big company, but um, please consider us as a startup company. Biopolymers and BSF is a small group of experts, and uh, we do believe in uh, biopolymers. And uh, one advantage of it is also compostable plastics. So, um, in Everyday life, yeah, being an environmental engineer, I'm dealing with sustainability issues related to biopolymers. And uh, in order to avoid all this simple material comparison with the conventional plastics, which we already use every day in our life, I'm actually trying to see what are the opportunities where bioplastic in general can contribute, where we have to see, where we can see the added value. And um, one of this is exactly how to um, come up with these um, targets to reach a resource efficient Europe. And of course today, uh, let's focus on Sweden and resource efficient Scandinavia. So, um, first, large field where we can see contributions that can be waste management. Why? Because food waste and also green waste, uh, so carbon waste is a large um, part of it. And if we divert organic waste from other parts, Definitely we can get some benefits. And also if we uh, send them to biological treatment, and biological treatment for all of you is composting, anaerobic digestion, or have it combined, um, like it's a trend today in Europe, like the skate systems, we can see many environmental benefits. So let's start with resource efficiency. Yeah, having a compost where you actually convert or transform your waste into a new material which you can use. Then having a soil nutrients. And let's not talk only about carbon or, or nitrate. Let's talk also about phosphates, which are actually scarce elements. Then you definitely can have a reduced carbon footprint. Having food waste sent to a compo or composting or, or anaerobic digestion can actually reduce carbon compared to incineration or landfill. And finally, yes, we do have a renewable uh, energy source. So this biomass can be used for biogas. Uh, production. So with us and with all these statements and many others can also many governments, associations, they definitely agree and this is something which we have acknowledged over the past few years. And this is exactly the reason why, for example, your can waste management framework um, demands the separate collection of, of food waste. And um, in line with that, the Swedish waste management um, plan targets that 50% of the food waste is sourced and separated biologically treated by 2018. It's a large goal, it's a very high goal to reach. And in, in addition to this, we also talk about um, bioeconomy, so about what you've heard now from our colleague from Epcot, what, what is happening, sorry. Um, so the, the promotion of biopolymers, bio waste or renewables, so we have all this nice framework, but then um, what is the problem? Why people do have difficulties to separate organic waste in an easy way? And when we did a, a survey in Germany, in Baden-Württemberg region, this is what we found out. Most of the people use paperbacks or actually just newspapers. So uh, what they had is that this paper leaked through, of course. Then, it, of course, especially in summer times, you have problems with others, which, so it smells bad. And then, of course, this nasty cleaning of the bin. So, listen to them. Then we looked also what the country offers. So, every country has a different waste management system. So, of course, there are some common understanding, but at the end, every country, country offers different infrastructure, and this is what we need to look into. So, looking at Sweden, um, Biobin is available to only 50% of municipalities. And the people who are really, I would say, in Europe, one of the highest, uh, have the highest awareness, mm -hmm. they collect 673 kilotons of food and green waste together per year. And looking at food waste only, 60% is sent to anaerobic digestion, 30% to composting. So this is what we have. And this is what we need to so understand and create solutions to match this system. And this is why BSF 
um, together with our project EcoBio and EcoFlex, trying to find partners and also in Sweden. And we are proud to say that we uh, have developed bio compostable bags together with um, We developed um, <coughs> partnership with Gaia for, to produce compostable bags, which are actually successfully treated in aerobic digestion plants in south of Sweden. Second, um, we do work with Europe for mobile composters. And uh, this is exactly to, to reach those people who don't have direct contact to, to access to biobin to be able to do composting. So our bags are also treated in these mobile composters. And also, when you look at the Swedish market, people are um, accustomed to use paper bags. So I, I know I lived here for six months. I studied in Stockholm. And um, we use paper bags. And um, then we thought, okay, why to change a behavioral for some people who don't maybe have um, still some um, mix, so let's say mixed feelings with plastics? Why we just don't make a coating layer on the paper bag? And this is what you will be able also to see outside. I believe that um, you had a chance. So these leaf bags can be both compostable but also they can provide mechanical requirements which people do need. So now when people do use the bags, we ask them, okay, so why do you use now? Why do you collect more waste? Well, yeah, not only did they collect the waste, they collected more waste. They collected 20% per household more waste. Um, the reasons were it's more clean. The, the bio bin has to be, um, they don't need to be, um, Clean and they, it smelled less. So for all these reasons, they um, they were willing to use the bags. And not only that, but we found out that there were less polyethylene bags in composting plants. So what we found out is actually at the end, it's uh, um, that people would just need effective labeling of these compostable bags, and this would have this would be the key to ensure that we have a really clean bio stream. So, but let's look into other opportunities. We said we discover opportunities. Okay, these are again waste bags, but then we talk also about shopping bags. What if a shopping bag can be also used after several times used for shopping? What if finally used is it also for bio waste collection? And we looked into an LCA of such a product and found out that actually this collection of organic waste in the final stage can bring many environmental advantages. And um, the food waste management, uh, management is actually the one who drives the results of the LCA study. And what I'm trying to say here is that we shouldn't go for always material comparison. What we need to think about is not which material we use, but what we use it for. So really, there are no bad materials. It's just bad applications. So we need to think about where biopolymers would give an added value. And this is one of the one of the examples, and definitely the results confirm that, uh, for example, biodegradable bag can, can add value to a more efficient review. Okay, but then let's look at the uh, also other areas, yeah? Next one, waste management system. Um, let's think about uh, agriculture or packaging. And in agriculture, we already talked about compost. Definitely, you can always bring compost and to improve soil or to um, improve soil um, before the um, erosion. But finally, what you can do is also use the mushroom, and the mushroom will definitely um, save some collection costs, but also um, will help us to have less pollution. Because if you think about globally, about countries like China or so on, where they use a very thick film, like 8 to 10 microns. This film is not possible to be collected. It's too dirty, and they do not, do not have recycling facilities. And this is where we can have advantage, because people can just leave the mushroom on the soil and have the same, and still fulfill the purpose of having um, more yield, yeah? The country to have more yield. And the next, um, I'm sorry, but I think I have the wrong presentation here. <laughs> no? Okay. I have one music. 
Okay, that's <laughs> somebody did an update. Uh, well, um, in the circle of, um, of a plastic um, used for packaging, we can think about using renewables, yes, and this is an advantage where we can have material which can have reduced carbon footprint, but on the other hand, we need a material which would be a drop-in solution, which, be, which can be reprocessed, and this is something which is very important for, for packaging producers. So, the advantage is definitely in a food packaging, where food packaging can be together with the food base collected and biologically treated. And, for example, we are talking about food, um, uh, coffee capsules, like coffee packaging, or we can think about meat trays, or let's say go further, where composting maybe is not the primary issue, so we can talk also about cosmetics and so other applications where bio-based is the requirement. And finally, yeah, after learning all this, we can conclude that a separate organic waste uh, collection can lead to higher resource efficiency and that uh, helps us build a build in a circular economy. And compostable plastic bags and compostable paper cotton bags can help people accept this collection, so to increase the collection rate. And this is why, on behalf of our team, we do advocate to help people to accelerate the establishment of this separate organic waste collection by actually exempting certified compostable plastic bags and coated paper bags from taxation of carrier bags and to allow us to promote certified compostable bags in the region. So for all this, we need also your help and your support. Um, thank you very much. If there are any questions, I would be glad to answer 